everybody, and welcome to Game Day, Tennessee and UT Martin. It is a nooner Eastern time. It's going to be on the SEC Network, so uh, looking forward to that. Of course, the Volunteers 6-0, 3-0 in SEC play, are riding high, coming off that win over Alabama last week. But today, it is UT Martin, and it's the next game on the schedule before you dip back into SEC play. I uh, want to thank you guys for joining us here on the VFL Players Lounge. It is uh, brought to you by the Volunteer Club, powered by Spire Sports. So big thanks to them for making this all possible. Uh, today, really looking forward to bringing on a couple of VFLs. First one, this is his uh, third appearance back on the show. He's a regular now, former Tennessee offensive lineman Jack Jones. Jack, what's up, brother? Man, thanks for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited coming off a, a big weekend in Knoxville um, for the Vols. Um, looking forward to this. UT Martin game and um, man, just excited, man. Vol Nation is 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 back. We are here to stay. I love it. You heard it right there. He said Vol Nation, it's back. Obviously, it went over Alabama, and you can say that for sure. Uh, joining us here today on the VFL Players Lounge is going to be Todd Kelly Jr. Was on for Week One, back at it again. TK, I bet you're uh, you're all jacked up about where the Tennessee football team is. I'm excited. It's good to be back, especially with my boy. The Juicy J himself, so uh, glad to be a part of the of the group today. All right, well, I just want to get things started. Like Tennessee beat Alabama, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> not throwing rocks here. You guys weren't able to be a part of that, but neither were the you know ten other teams before you guys. I mean, it was a fifteen year losing skid. Uh, Jack, man, Tennessee finally beat Alabama as, as a former player. How you feeling? Man, I'm just n- nothing but uh, nothing but excitement. For, for those guys, um, I think there's a lot of all fans that got a little teary eyed this weekend, uh, growing up a fan and, and then, you know, becoming a player, you know, taking down Alabama has been something we've been wanting for a long time now. Um, and man, I'm just, just so excited for those kids and what an incredible experience for all the people that were able to experience that. And they'll never forget where they were. Um, so awesome for the university, um, seeing those field goal posts getting taken down man i don't know if it gets much better than that um very very excited tk you were one of those people in house i saw your pictures you were there uh when when the final seconds are taken off that that ball gets through the uprights barely and then all mayhem consumes like you know ensues what were you feeling right there in that moment yeah eric i was i was there at the game um what comes with fatherhood is only being able to stay for three and a half quarters. So we listened to it on the radio on the way back and they did a great job of, of keeping me updated, but watched the fourth quarter at home with, with our son. And uh, I had him up in the air. I said, you know, this is, this, this is it. This is the game. And that ball went through the field goal post and it's a week later. I'm still wishing that I could have that opportunity to, to feel it again because uh, that was something special. I think I, sh- I shook my son in the air a little too hard. But <laughs> <laughs> he knows how excited I was. And um, obviously we, we you know get to take a stab at UT Martin today, but uh, still riding high nonetheless. All right. Well, I mean, obviously, obviously it was a, a big time plays that made this happen. So, you know, the thing that starts off right here, you've got – Alabama lining up for a, a field goal and it, it goes wide right. And then Tennessee gets the football back with 15 seconds, you know, on the clock. And you know, Josh Heupel's proven time in and time out that he, you're just going to be aggressive and go for it, right? Goes down the field, Brew McCoy, a big boy catch. And then you line up with Chase McGrath. And I, I think, you know, was it tipped at the line of scrimmage? The, the snap was, a, you know, not fantastic, but nonetheless, he boots it through. Would not have been good from 41 yards, but it was good from 40, and that's all that mattered. Uh, Jack, it was it's? It, it, I think the radio call was it was the the ugliest, beautiful kick of all time, or whatever the case may be. I mean, you know, it, did you think it was good right off the get go? Man, um, I mean, I was holding my breath. I think every ball fan was. Um, we just we've been through so much the past you know, however many years. And um, I, I did feel this, there's something special though. Um, some about Hinton Hooker, some about this team, being at the Florida game, being around them. I did believe we were going to win that game. And um, yeah, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that I, I sat there and called it, but uh, I did have a feeling, man, this is going to be a play that we watch, you know, 
for many, many years to come, um, a big moment in the history of a great rivalry and um, in the history of, a, in my opinion, one of the most historically amazing football teams in the world, uh, the University of Tennessee Vols. I just think, you know, it made it that much more special too. And I know a lot of people have said that, but all the, all the stuff the Vol fans have been through and, you know, the, the teams have been through in the past, like that moment, um, it was, it was magical. And um, I think, uh, I think we celebrated accordingly. Yeah, no doubt. This is, uh, if you're watching on YouTube right now, this is the fans right before uh, Tennessee gets out there for the 40 yard, you know, field goal to, to try to take this lead here, try to win the football game. They are rowdy. They are going nuts down there. This is the South end zone. And obviously the uprights are, you know, right to, to, to the, to the screen right here. And as soon as the ball went in, Todd, this was my view running onto the field. Let's see if I can find this right here. This is my view running onto the field and kind of what I saw while I was out there. It was a, you know, everybody's going nuts. It was a combination of cigars. <laughs> there was some other stuff in there, I'm sure, but it was a beautiful scene. <laughs> and this is what it's all about with college football. And I mean, there's been so many different videos throughout uh, the week. And I mean, get, could you ever imagine yourself have either one of you guys ever been in a situation like this I, I don't believe it was at Tennessee obviously but uh, just some type of mayhem on the field like this I mean quite the celebration no you uh you see that sea of orange and uh you had a good view I didn't know Tyler Barron ran into uh 15 running off and he said yeah. well, you know what's up man we got we got the W talking about Tyler uh that just gets me excited man um uh, doesn't get better than that, right? You see the fans, and I think my battery went from 80% to 20% just watching all the videos, people's point of view of where they were in the stadium when that kick went in, uh, when the goalposts were coming down. Uh, I saw a video of when the goalposts snapped and everybody went wild. Uh, that's something that you dream of. That's a game you dream of, um, and that's what the players were able to do. All right, so now Tennessee – Jack, as you pointed out, Tennessee's back, right? I mean, you know, what else would you need in order to say Tennessee's back? Obviously, you want some consistency. I, I recognize that. Uh, you haven't won anything yet. You haven't won an SEC championship. You haven't, you know, haven't gone to a college football playoff. But all those things are right there in front of you, and they still were before this game. But, you know, to me, you beat one of the big dogs. You beat one of the big three. You beat Florida already. But you beat Alabama. That means something, even more than the rivalry and everything. You know, looking forward to the rest of the season, starting today with UT Martin. I mean, kind of for you, what's your expectation of this football team now going forward? Um, you know, I think I think just seeing how they respond after a big game like that, um, I think we all expect and, and what they expect is to come out and handle business um, versus UT Martin. But um, moving forward, you know, I think the – we've been as consistent as a team as you can, as you can find. I mean, we've got a lot of top 25 wins. Um, we're finishing games. Um, you know, we're fighting, we're, you know, we're like that, that win was so huge and so pivotal for this season. I think the confidence for our team, um, and I think they're a confident bunch, but now I think they know like, Hey, we're here. We just beat, you know, the top dogs. We're the top dogs now. Um, I'll be interested to see though, how we respond you know, we got a lot of big games left. It's a long season. But I do think after that win, I think before it, you're like, all right, we're, we're undefeated. You know, what, what's going to happen? Here we go, Alabama. Now we're like, you start to see that pathway to like, all right, let, this is how we get to an SEC championship. This is how we get to a playoff. I know everyone's already running all the scenarios in their head. If the, you know, if we go to Georgia and lose and then Bama beats Georgia in the SEC championship, but we're running those scenarios through our head right now because it's it, it's what's it's what can happen. And um, I definitely think the big test is coming up, um, and we all know that. But I want to see him handle business for UT Martin, kind of like earlier when we talked about earlier in the season when we had some some uh, easier opponents. You want to see him go out there, execute, um, take care of business, heal up, get everyone out of there, get some young guys, get some reps in, and um, get ready for for the next opponent, but obviously you can't take anybody lightly. We know that. And um, let's just go handle business for UT Martin um, one game at a time. I know that's, I know that's what TK is going to probably echo too. You got to take it one, one game at a time, but as a fan, it'll be interesting to see how they respond. I hope there's no, you know, great teams don't have those hangovers from the big wins. So let's go out there, take care of business and um, you know, move on to the next one. 
TK, how hard is that? Uh, Something I've been so impressed with this team, and it happened a couple of times against Alabama, is when something goes wrong, when adversity hits, okay, that's fine. I'm just going to go out and do what I do. And they just respond and respond and respond. Uh, Hinton Hooker throws his first interception of the season. The defense comes back and forces an Alabama punt. There was, I think, one punt on either side. I can't remember. Maybe maybe two punts. Whatever. Uh, Not many stops, but they come out and make a stop right there. You have the scoop and score touchdown. You know, the, the Dallas Turner just walks in, essentially. Tennessee comes right back and scores on the next play. How hard is it for this team, coming off such an emotional high, to continue to get back to work, uh, you know, approach it just like it is Alabama again, you know, today being UT Martin? Yeah. Um, you know, I think that's been the message all week is um, not being satisfied, right? And um, enjoying enjoying the win the last 24 hours and you got to get back to it. And so today, you know, versus UT Martin, continuing to keep our foot on the gas pedal, um, starting where we left off, right? Putting up 52 points um, and that defense improving, looking at the film and figuring out what they've done wrong and, um, you know, boosting their confidence today, stopping that the Skyhawks offense. And so, um, you know, I think today is a pivotal moment to where uh, you show that, hey, you know, we've won a game and, but we want more. And similar to what Jack said, um, you know, Alabama game was huge. I actually talked to Coach Farmer just about, hey, you know, what games were special to you? And he said as a head coach, uh, you know, being Florida, Georgia, and Alabama, that's really what your resume is. And this year, hype was 2-0. Um, and everybody, you know, I, I kind of did the math that Jack was doing. I'm like, dang, I'm kind of guilty of that, too, because I'm trying to figure out who would have thought we were talking about the Tennessee Volunteers going to the college football playoff, right? But it's a real thing. And these players know it too, but I don't think that's going to separate them and their mission of you know giving their all every day and on the football field. You know, it, it's very real. And, and the former football player in, in you is saying, "Wait, one game at a time. Chill out, chill out, chill out." But former players now, you know, fans, you, you can you can play that game, and it really is. It's right there in front of you. You got a obviously you got Martin this week. You got Kentucky coming up that. You know, you're way better than, but Kentucky's good enough football team to where if you go in there and beat yourself, you'll lose. Well, that'll be that'll be a big game for me. That'll be a one where we see, like, I think, I mean, and I'm not looking past UT Martin today, but I think that'll be, you know, do we come out there and and play ball like we're supposed to? And and I think this team is fully capable. I think Hennon Hooker, man, I mean, this kid is, he's laying down a foundation of um, one of the best quarterbacks to ever come through Tennessee. New and, sheriff um, in town, baby. <laughs> yeah, Peyton, Peyton Manning, you know, Peyton, I don't think Peyton would have said that on college game day if he hadn't studied up the film and knew that. And, um, I, I mean, I love it. He answered, He an- the, you know, when the bell rang, he answered it, and um, he was confident in his guys. I mean, I love seeing how confident he was in our kickers and our team to close it out, too. I, I love that. He, uh, he carries himself the way that you want to see a leader of your team, the way you want to see a Heisman – candidate um i think he pushed himself in the front row of that i think you know uh my good friend thomas edwards was on 104.5 with buck rising and was talking about look you know that player that came the the, the you know the, the opposing quarterback that came in there is a pretty dang good player and played a great game but he didn't win he didn't win it um hen and hooker did and um it's even more impressive to me that he came back from that adversity because Hennon hasn't thrown a lot of picks you know he's he's protected the ball well and um, he came back like, you know, it didn't affect him. He's got it. He's got the ice in his veins. So I'm excited. I think that Kentucky game, though, coming back in, you know, that'll be that'll be a big indicator for me because um, that that could be, you know, what some look at is like a trap game for us because. Um, but I think if, if, if ball football is where I think they are, they know that we don't lose to Kentucky and uh, they're going to handle business. It's kind of funny because, like, me, from a guy who covers the team every single day, I know the Ross are like the back of my hand. I know I know where they're good. I know where they got some deficiencies. I know where they have no depth. And so, like, when you're picking games and doing expectations, it's often – and I know a lot of times maybe that's why, you know, the media gets a bad name, but it's kind of hard for guys like us because you know that, like, if you go out there and play – like, take LSU, for example. I thought that was going to be a dogfight. I thought it was you know, the entire offseason. Uh, you're going down there to their place. The 11 a.m. local time kick was good. But Tennessee just beats their ass. <laughs> I mean, they do, right? And, and you know they're capable of doing that. But if something goes wrong here, something goes wrong here, if you beat yourselves, you can lose. Tennessee hasn't done that at all this year. And, and that's been really good. And, and, you know, a reason for that, as you pointed out, Jack, is because, you know, the, the new sheriff in town, if you will, 
Hendon Hooker, you look at, you know, who would have thought we're talking about an SEC championship or a potential college football playoff berth and all that? Who would have thought we're talking about a Heisman front runner, arguably halfway through the season? Hendon Hooker, uh, number two, according to most, you know, odds right now. Uh, CJ Stroud, minus 110 of Ohio State. Caleb Williams, plus 700. Hendon's there at plus 500. Of course, you got Blake Corum, Bryce Young, DTR, DJ, whatever, Clemson quarterback, and Jameer Gibbs. Those are kind of the the guys in the mix right now. I mean, Hendon TK has played phenomenal football this year. It's been incredible. It's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Yeah, um, he's a leader and um, you know, I think he's going to turn like 25 this season by the, like bowl season. So is that, he older you know, than he you? Brings, he, 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 he brings that maturity to the team. Um, uh, maybe me and Jack can play again if that's the case, but, uh, <laughs> oh, he, he's mature and he's a leader and they kind of look at him as that. And, um, that's what you need. You know, he's a ball player and he bounced back when, you know, try, you know, he threw a pick, he, dropped or fumbled, you know, on that handoff kind of deal. But guess what? He bounced back. Um, and that's what you need in a team. And uh, he's kind of stepped up and and filled that role. And I think he's the perfect guy for it. And, um, you know, he's leading this team. And, you know, we're not going to lose the UT. Come on now. Um, so I think looking forward, um, you know, it's the it's next game. So get him out healthy, um, you know, have them run that offense a couple of series and let's get out of there. Talking about guys who have stepped up. Let's go back to the Alabama game. That's just the nature. And again, no disrespect, but it is what it is, right? That's the nature of playing UT Martin today. You go back and you talk about the, the program historic win from last week. A guy who stepped up, this guy right here, Jalen Hyatt. My goodness. Have you guys, either one of you, y'all jump Incredible. in. Incredible. Have you ever seen a performance like this in a single game, Jack? Randy Moss. I guess would be my, like, you see that old stat of Randy Moss for the Vikings where he had like (laughs) that. I mean, that's literally like what it reminded me of. Um, uh, He just, I mean, he took over and it was, it was fun to watch, man. It was fun to watch that picture, the pictures of uh, him and Peyton in the locker room, him holding up the five. I mean, those, those are going to live forever. Um, And as a former player, being able to see that and appreciate that for that, for that young man, man. I mean, he, he also, I mean, he made a lot of money, I think, too, during that game, too. Uh, he 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 definitely set his future up for himself. So, um, yeah, it was just incredible to watch take over. I haven't seen that happen before um, in, in a game like that. Uh, it was special. You, before we had you on, uh, before the Florida game, you and Jabari, and, and y'all were kind of talking about that, and you mentioned – a game like this for Hendon, not only for future prospects and all that, but, you know, for current name, image, and likeness, you know, over at on three, we have this NIL oh, yeah. evaluator. And I think Jalen Hyatt went from somewhere like 200,000 to like 657,000 <laughs> after that yeah. game. I mean, a game like that, he came in with five touchdowns. He left with 10 touchdowns. Yeah. He left with uh, 45,000 new followers. I think is what I saw too on his social media. I follow a lot of y'all, the on three stuff. So, yeah, great for him. Um, that do, I mean, it's the other thing that comes with that is like, you know, being a team like this at a, at the University of Tennessee where the NIL is really taking off right now. Like nothing, this could, there couldn't have been anything better than to propel the NIL than for us to start winning games like this. And you gotta, you gotta some kind of, you gotta think about like, is that gonna mess with the guys, you know? And um, I truly think we got a solid crew. I think we got, you know, the right leaders in place. Um, and I think, you know, coach Heupel is going to keep them, keep them in line, but, uh, that's a whole new avenue that we didn't have to deal with. Like, and obviously we, we didn't make it this far, but like, I can't imagine, you know, I, I think it would motivate me as a player to go out there and ball out. Cause you're like, Hey, if I can go ball out and play well, I can make more money through, you know, ads or whatever it is. So, um, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Just not just for the Vols, but for all of college football, you know, um, but I'm excited. It's good for good for the boys. I want to see them win. I want to see them make a lot of money while they're doing it. And uh, that definitely paved the way for for Jalen Hyatt. He's a uh, man. Yeah, those pictures of Peyton are, are incredible. Like I I, yeah. I, uh, I I keep going back and looking at like like Todd said, my phone battery keeps going dead every day, every <laughs> night because I'm just like seeing a new video. So maybe maybe that picture will live on a little bit longer than the last memorable Alabama photo 
the Tennessee fans have with uh, Rashawn Gall, <laughs> which is an amazing photo, by the way. I love hey, that. RG, RG's a, RG's a legend, man. I, I wouldn't change it. I, uh, I think, I think that picture embodied the the way a lot of us feel about Alabama, but we might not express it that way. But uh, <laughs> you know, can't can't knock them for it. Oh, absolutely not. Hey, TK, did you have a cigar Saturday night? Oh, yeah. I puffed me one Saturday and Sunday, man. I had a 24-hour <laughs> session. Um, and, and I posted the uh, the mood with my boy RG with his fingers up right after the game. Because uh, we roomed together when he did that, and I was injured. I didn't play in that game. Uh, but he called me after the game. I'm like, boy, what am I going to do with you, man? But uh, – <laughs> Finally, didn't know I was going to be able to use the pitcher so soon. So I'm glad I got to put that back into play. But, yeah, man, uh, you know, Hyatt putting up five touchdowns. Uh, I'm selfish because I'm a fan now. I'm like, dang, man, he's pro eligible. He's going to bounce out of here, do his thing. Uh, but, man, that's – I'll be surprised if I see any kind of, you know, play like that again, you know, receiver putting up five touchdowns. That's video game. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's that's like me playing versus the CPU on rookie mode. Like, come on, <laughs> dude. Like, if I'm an Alabama DB, I'm thinking, did this dude really score? Not one, not two, not three, not four, but five touchdowns on us, right? And we're a top ten defense. Ooh, I can't imagine what Nick Saban is saying all week long. Yeah, you think I mean, they had a couple up downs today, Todd. You <laughs> think there's a couple up downs over there down in? Uh... Not in the T-Town. A couple up-downs today, I would imagine. Man, I mean, that there. Tuesday practice. <laughs> um, wouldn't want to yeah, be there. I, yeah, wouldn't want to be there. That's the other thing, though, that you got to think about as a player. You know, if you, you know, I know you got to take it one game as a time, at a time, but you got to know a team like that is going to – they're going to – they provenly are going to come back and, mm-hmm. and are a fierce opponent. So you got to stay locked in and keep getting better week after week after week. But, I mean, the fact that we beat them and, – and also, like, you, we were talking about the turnovers, and we still beat them, man. I mean, that's, that's a good that's – that's what a good football – a great football team does. Um, so, I love to see it. I love to see it. All right, I got a couple more things I want to ask you guys uh, about this football game, obviously. And, of course, looking ahead to UT Martin, that's coming up today at noon Eastern, and uh, Tennessee's looking to go 7-0. and You guys both were on the 20 – it was 2015 and 16. Y'all started out, what, 5-0? and Is that right? It was 2016. We started out five and 15. We uh we lost to Oklahoma oh, to start right. the year. Okay, so I mean it's been a minute since Tennessee's yeah. had a, a run like this to begin the season. Of course, you know your role whenever no pun intended you take down Alabama. So more on that coming up, guys. Uh, let's get a message real quick from our uh, proud sponsors of this podcast. It is uh, the Volunteer Club, powered by Spire Sports. Can't do this without them. A uh, very appreciative and a, a big thanks to them as always. The game has changed and Spire Sports is here. With name, image, and likeness arriving, your orange fandom can now be put into action. Visit thevolunteerclub.com and become a member. 90% of every dollar generated through the Volunteer Club, powered by Spire, will go directly to athletes to improve the student-athlete experience at Tennessee. It's not just about winning the next game. It's about next season. It's about the next generation. It's about the Tennessee legacy. Join at thevolunteerclub.com. That's thevolunteerclub.com. Tennessee and UT Martin coming up here in just a couple hours, really early game, noon Eastern. It is the Volunteers versus the Skyhawks. Tennessee looking to go 7-0 and uh, here as we officially kick off the second half of the season. And uh, Tennessee has not played UT Martin, I want to I want to say, until since 2010. They've played, obviously, uh, before, but looking forward to uh, that. And, of course, you can follow uh, live in-game updates, general quarters. We'll have a game thread going on uh, Twitter at uh, VolQuest underscore on three. So you can always check out there. Uh, but this is the VFL Players Lounge brought to you by the Volunteer Club, powered by Spire Sports. we got some VFLs, Jack Jones and Todd Kelly Jr. on today. Uh, continuing to uh, get your thoughts and get your uh, reasoning on this Alabama game last week. Todd, I want to go to you, man. Um, a pretty banged up secondary right now. Really banged up. Tennessee was out. Jalen McCullough, obviously, was out. Warren Burrell, who's out for the year. Um, Kamal hadn't been playing this football game. You had some young guys in the secondary. And also, you had a walk-on at cornerback for the last four plays on defense in this football game. You talk about performing when your number is called. To me, that is just a gritty, gritty effort for some guys who who grew up in the secondary. 
Yeah, that's an opportune moment, right? Um, you know, as a walk-on, you put in the work just like scholarship athletes, and you never know you're going to get that chance in that moment. Um, but for it to be against the defending Heisman winner, uh, you know, going down to score on you fourth quarter, I don't think anybody would ever imagine that. So to step up for those plays that he was in there, uh, didn't piss down his leg, stood up, stood tall, and uh, was able to come in and, and fill his role, uh, that's pretty special. Um, you know, for for them to score 49 or 52, uh, you know, they said, you know what, hey, let's just step up this moment, this opportune time and, and get it done. And I think, you know, salute to that walk on uh, because you never know when that moment's going to come. I think that's so special. And uh, the coolest thing is, you know, he knew his friends and his family were watching and he got that opportune moment and, and made something with it. So that's really exciting. Obviously, we got to get healthy in the back end, um, especially moving forward. But you got to use what you got, right? Um, it's not about the X's and O's. It's about who wants to execute. And so obviously, he was ready, um, stepped up in that situation, and couldn't be prouder as a former defensive back to say that. Yeah, William Wright from Innsworth High School, uh, third year in the program. Actually got a lot of run in spring because kind of like right now, everybody was out. And there were just some opportunities, but you know, you had Deshaun Rucker who went out the series before Christian Charles went out on that series. So in the last couple of plays of the game, you got Brandon Turnage on one end who played tw uh, 20 snaps in this game, got a whole lot of confidence, which was really good. And then he had yeah. William Wright, which was just huge. And I, I love that story. Uh, Jack Darnell Wright made himself some money the last two weeks, Yes, but especially yes. this week. Man, he's looking he's looking really strong. Um, I was excited to see where he was awarded the uh, offensive lineman of the week um, in the SEC. That was well deserved. He's been anchoring it down, um, playing really solid football right now, and it's it's really fun to watch. I feel like he's getting better and better each week, more confident. And not that he wasn't confident before, but when you I feel like for any player, when you start playing, putting games together where you're really locking it down, it naturally just gives those guys more confidence and. Um, they got a good group, man. I was, I was getting, I haven't, I haven't been able to talk to Coop yet. I plan on calling him this week whenever it probably got a little settled down, but, uh, man, just watching him and, and Jerome Carvin and Spragans and all, all those guys, man, they played their, played their butts off, man. And they, I mean, that was a legendary performance for an offense. You know, they put up a lot of points the last time. I think Swanee was the last, you know, had put up the most points and, yep. You know that you know that had to be like a hundred years ago, <laughs> Swanee man. Uh, but uh, I mean, that's just that's incredible to see. That's their legacy. Um, and then for Cooper, you know, for his dad, and I, I saw some things where he commented on the win. I mean, that you know that made my that made my heart happy for them and that family and just uh, that whole line group. I mean, they play they've they played through a lot of uh, tough games and they're a veteran group, I think. And you know the 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 scene in which the the throwing up and looking your opponent down. I mean, I was I on. was waiting on when you were going to yeah. bring that up. That 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 was uh that was awesome. I loved it. I mean, that is that is O line right there, <laughs> man. I mean, I'm sure someone was doing. I was thinking about this. I mean, sorry for the poor soul that was doing snow angels at the end of the game and that uh, <laughs> on that spot of the field. But uh, it was really awesome to see. Um, I was so happy for those guys. I mean, a legendary performance. You, you hear the stuff about Jalen Hyatt and um, Hennon Hooker, as as you should. But the O-line, man, I mean, they, they played their tail off. And uh, they fought for every for every, uh, for every every piece of grass out there, man. And they got the dub. So it was incredible to watch. You think about it. The last two weeks, Darnell Wright has, I won't say owned, but pretty much – you know, dominated really, uh, BJ Ojolari and then Will Anderson Jr. Now, Anderson flipped around a little bit, but I mean, those are two not only NFL guys. I mean, Anderson, of course, is going to be a first rounder, maybe even top 10. I mean, that that's quite a two week run. Um, TK, if you're a defender, it's late in the fourth quarter, you know, it's a, it's a back and forth game, top ball game, whatever. It's crunch time and you're dog tired. It's like play 83 or 79 or whatever of however many plays. And you look at the offensive line of the huddle, and some guy pukes, <laughs> pukes through his face mask, and then looks at you and says, "Oh yeah, yeah." But is is that <laughs> what are you thinking in that situation as a defender? I'm thinking, man, it's gonna be a long day. <laughs> <laughs> that dude's crazy. That dude sounds a little what? loose. What that you want? I saw that video. 
yeah, I, man, I saw that video. I was like, that's something Jack would do, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, that's just um, that's just the the trench mentality, right? And uh, you know, Will Anderson was a no factor at all. Um, I thought he was gonna have take a toll in that game, and that just speaks volumes of that of that O line. Um, o line won us that ball game. Period. Bar none. Um, Hendon was back there. He was comfortable. Um, he was able to to read scan, um, read option one, option two, option three. That that doesn't happen. Uh, we put the heat on uh, Young more than more than they put the heat on us, and I don't think anybody would have expect going into the game. And so, uh, yeah, for all the plays that went on, seeing that seeing that lineman, that's like, dude, I hope they showed that in the film room, in the team room, like, cause that's that's the mentality. Uh, you know, it's dog mentality. Mano e mano. They score, we score. They score, we score. Uh, of course, they don't feel good as a defensive player, but as an O lineman, uh, you know, that's that's what you came there for. You came there to do that, and, and that's what they did. Uh, they're protecting Hooker. I think Hooker's got. I don't even think Hooker's gotten sacked like double digit times yet this whole season. Um, oh, no. So it's so it's uh it's nuts. It's crazy. Um, how many do you, do you remember how many sacks there were that game, Eric? Can that game that was one. There's only one, and it, and it, and I remember it, and it was it was honestly a coverage. Yeah, if I remember correctly, it was a coverage sack. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't um, like we, he had Hendon had time. Obviously, I don't know who was. I, I could see the whole field, but it was a coverage sack. So, yeah. um, want to give the O line. Hey, yeah. I want to give him some. Give him some good props there. It shouldn't have been a sack, you know. Get out of there faster. No, I'm just kidding. You did a great. I mean, job, the O line but, uh, props there is you. You've you've scored thirty points in nine straight games or whatever that is. I mean, good grief! Like the O, yeah. o line's the number one scoring offense in the nation, right? I mean, O line's killing it. Yeah, I mean, I think I think in this, I think after this week too, everyone's taking notice. I mean, you're starting to see guys put on watch lists for awards and all that good stuff, as they should. Um, but yeah, I'm. Some guys made some some guys for the Vols made a lot of good money um, for their futures uh, this past this past week. But honestly, um, you still gotta you gotta come back and T Martin and do the same thing. Can't get you know they're gonna those dudes. I always I'll never knock a you know a UT Martin kid. Those kids, I mean, this is their dream. A lot of those kids wanted to come play at Tennessee. So um, you don't want to give up a sack or do anything stupid for for those guys. But uh, I I mean, like we handle business in LSU, like we've handled business. And all the games thus far, I, I can't imagine that we don't come out there and and put up 21, 28 points in the first. Uh, and I, I'm excited too. I want to see them catch that fire. That's what you want to see out of these teams. Like it reminds me kind of of the Joe Burrow LSU team, how they caught fire, they started playing well, and then all of a sudden there there they are. Um, obviously, the makeup of our team is different, but I think this game, you know, let's go out there and throw 28 up in the first quarter, and let's show, you know, just keep going. And um, then next week we'll go, we'll go take down the kitty cats. <laughs> so, so Todd, how, you know, in, in a game like this, again, whenever you're, I mean, I don't even know what the line is at this point in time. It's a lot to a little, you're playing an FC, uh, FCS opponent. Uh, obviously that, what, what do you want to see out of Tennessee today? Uh, injury free, of course, but what's the challenge for Tennessee today in order to stay on track before you get back into SEC play? I think it's, keeping your foot on the gas pedal, number one. And then, you know, number two, you, you mentioned it, staying healthy. And then number three, um, you know, let's have a good defensive outing today. Um, giving up 49, no matter who you play, whether it's Alabama or any other team. Um, yeah, you played against, you know, former Heisman winner, but that's not a good feeling. And all week they've, they've known that. And so I think today coming out and really showing a, a great defensive effort, understanding that, you know, your offense is going to put up He's going to put up points regardless, but showing up on defense, making plays, forcing forcing turnovers, and um, getting back there in the backfield, getting some sacks, having fun, um, because it's not fun giving up 49 points. And even though it's UC Martin, uh, you know, we're going to win this game. Everybody knows that. But people still want to show up and show out. And then I think giving those younger guys, you know, the ability to go out and, and build some confidence by getting out there and, and playing and getting some plays under their feet. All right, I think this is accurate. If it's not, don't kill me, message boards. But uh, Power 5 teams who are undefeated entering today, Georgia, UCLA, Clemson, Ole Miss, Michigan, Ohio State, TCU, Syracuse, and Tennessee. Ohio State's a good team. I mean, there's there's good teams on that list. Don't get me wrong. You guys think Tennessee can beat any of those teams? I think we'd run it versus – I think we'd run it versus Ohio State. Um, 
After, after this weekend at Alabama, man, I, they, they I said me. all bets are off. Our I mean, offense, really, all bets are off. Our offense can't – if our offense comes like – and, I mean, we're missing a, a pretty dang good wide receiver too that's going to come back later this season. And it's I mean, Jalen Hyatt just had a career game, a legendary game. And then you bring that dude back who had probably had more hype coming into the season, and it's like, all right, let's go. I mean, I think keeping everyone healthy but is, is probably just the main thing. But um, – We've we've seen we got guys that'll plug and play if they believe, man. That that can that can solve a lot if you believe, and uh, we can score points too. But to what TK said, you know, as just a fan, you want to see the defense come in there, and you know they did give up a lot of points, but um, you want to see them come in there and dominate. Um, I think that's what everyone's looking for. Last thing I got for you guys before we get into bold and score predictions. Um, you guys have any message to the fans? You guys play in front of these fans; they're they're incredible. This season, um, you know, selling out UT Martin at the time of this recording is not sold out, uh, but there's gonna be a big crowd for homecoming. Kentucky sold out, every home game sold out. Uh, the atmosphere at Florida was incredible. The atmosphere, obviously, against Alabama inside Neyland Stadium was just wild. Uh, what about this fan base, TK? Man, that's what uh makes Tennessee what it is. I think for all the schools that are you know, Division One schools, all the teams that, you know, play in the FBS, and then all the schools in the SEC, you know, they talk about Tennessee. They know they know our fans. They know this orange that I'm wearing on my chest. Um, they understand what football – out of how much it means to each individual. Um, you know, every one of the 100,000 fans that's in that stadium, uh, they have a story of, you know, their first football game and, and what that's about. And, uh, you know, I think that the football players understand that too, and – People are starting to understand the tradition and more former players are coming back to support. Um, and, and that's what you want to see. But from a fan base, continue to support this team. Um, continue to, to give your all for, you know, the state of Tennessee every day. And uh, I just think it's it's so special that it's hard to explain. Um, you know, I, I don't think you can recreate it at any university ever. Yeah, yeah, Keep no doing, doubt. Keep, Anything else, Jack? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna echo everything that that TK said, but keep bringing it. I mean, that was a you saw the we all saw the penalty stats. Like that was definitely a, um, a definitely affected the game. Our fan base, which I've seen it happen before, but keep bringing it. Um, and just enjoy every moment of it. I I want to say you know just I'm so thankful for Vol Nation. You know, I know it's been a long time. And it was always a dream of mine to beat Alabama, and we never did. And um, just I appreciate Vaughn Nation for hanging in there and uh, enjoy every moment of it. Um, I grew up a fan. I grew up getting to drive up from Murfreesboro to watch games. It was a birthday present or getting to go see him play at Vandy. And I just, you know, just soak this in. I know it's been a long time coming. And, you know, you hear guys like uh, was it Dell Jones that – got emotional on that call before the game and um it means so much to not only uh you fans but us former players and um I think we all just got to soak it in man and enjoy it because I think this is a special team and this is a special year and uh I mean these scenes right now of the of the team and the hundred thousand rush in the field man I mean it's it's special so just continue believing in this team stay with them know that ball nation man y'all affect the game be loud and proud for that defense and uh, just keep supporting these guys, man. And I mean, also to see how much money we raised to pay for all the, the field goals. I mean, what, who else does that, man? I mean, that is just, it's incredible. i grateful for such an amazing fan base. Um, know those guys, know those kids are grateful for you and they're going out there and doing the best they can. Um, just always remember that. And um yeah, just keep cheering these boys on and soak it in, man. This is a special team. This is it's going to be really special to watch and see how this thing plays out. All right, boys, score and bold predictions. Obviously, the score prediction self explanatory, but if y'all remember, give me a bold prediction. Somebody who's going to play well, make some type of play, multiple touchdowns, couple of sacks, whatever it is. TK, why don't you kick us off here? Um, bold prediction and score. Yeah. I'll say. Man, bold prediction. I see Joe Milton throwing like three touchdowns. I think he's going to get in the game and and do his thing. Um, 
you know, I think he's been waiting his time and this is going to be a good chance for him to kind of show how he's improved as a player. Um, and then obviously score prediction. Good God. We might put, we might put 70 on these boys. <laughs> uh, I'll, call already it, this I'll, year. Call, I'll call it, I'll call it, I'll call it uh, 63, 63 to 10. 63 yeah. to 10. All right, Jack, what do you got? Um, Yeah, that was mine too. I think Joe Milton's going to come out and ball out. I think Hinton Hooker's going to take care of business real early. Uh, it's hard to pick which wide receiver are, is going to, I think is going to take over, but um I like. I mean, I would. I would love to see Jalen Hyatt come out for two or three series and do his thing again. I mean, it, nobody can stop him right now, one on one. So, uh, I, I like to see that. But um, for the for the score prediction, um, I'm gonna go with. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna go with seventy. This is a big number. <laughs> Seventy-two to. Uh, to six. 72 to six. It's quite, I think yeah, the, it's defense quite is, the number. I think the defense is going to answer the call and maybe, maybe Martin gets a trick player, a field goal or something. Um, something weird happens, but I think the defense is going to answer the call. And I think the offense is like the thing, the reason I think it's not because I just think we, our offense is just so fast paced and Joe Milton's going to go in there and try to score points. And uh, I think that's, yeah. So I think we'll I think we'll run it up pretty big on them today, but really looking forward to it and looking forward to um, next week taking down the Kitty Cats. Well, looking forward to it today, of course, Tennessee and UT Martin, and uh, then you get back into SEC play, uh, guys. Jack, TK, thanks so much, guys. Awesome stuff as always, and I'm sure we'll get you back on here before the season is over. Thanks so much, Eric. Thank you for having us on. It's always a pleasure. Go Vols. Roll balls, play a little Dixieland delight tonight, everybody. Light up another cigar, soak it in. Um, I think it's going to be a special year. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much. Again, that is Jack Jones and Todd Kelly Jr. VFLs right here on the VFL Players Lounge. Big thank you to the Volunteer Club, of course, powered by Spire Sports, for making this all possible. It is Tennessee. And UT Martin coming up today, noon Eastern. Follow us on the general quarters. We'll have a game thread going, of course, on Twitter at FalkWest underscore on three. I'm Eric Kane. You can always hit me up on Twitter at underscore Kaner as well. I appreciate the guys for joining us. Thank you so much for listening in and watching us on YouTube. Pound that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And stay right here at VolQuest.com all day long. Continual game day coverage and everything out uh, for post game as well. Uh, thanks you guys so much. And we'll tune in next week again for another edition of the VFL Players Lounge.